Hey everyone, this is Vicki Brown from Messy Table Studio here on behalf of Gina B. Aaron's design team and this is the May video. Okay, so this is what I came up with. I got myself a little piece of chipboard in the back because my mat is warped. Took a, I'm going to get a stencil and this is a 11 by 14 inch piece of computer paper and I'm going to trace this all over over and over on it and then I'm going to doodle in it because I want to use this for my cover for my black and white um, glue book. Now this idea is a culmination of other people's input and one of them came from Cindy Utter who sent me a picture of a circle that was divided up and doodled in each section so that's where this idea came from and then the idea of using um, Gina's stencils for a book cover came from Peg Robinson so you know you never know where inspiration is going to come from it was a casual conversation I was struggling and said, you know, I, I'm at my wit's end about what to do for my design team video because, you know, I, I'm just, I'm not a sparkly, shiny sort of person when it comes to my art. And I was struggling with what to do. And she said, well, then don't do that. Do something with a book cover and, you know, and a stencil. And I thought, okay. So I tried it with the other things. Did I go around this one? I tried it the other ways, and I didn't like it. You saw my mistakes or my my attempts, not mistakes, my attempts. And I didn't really see the value in them. Although later on, when I step away from the project, I'm sure I will see that they have value. Right now, today, or yesterday, I was a bit flustered, and I did not see their value or the potential of what they could be. Sometimes when you get like that, you just need to step away from a project, take a deep breath, work on something else, and then it will come back to you. All right, so I'm going to finish tracing this. And when I, I don't think I'm going to do the little bitty ones around the outside. Those are, well, maybe I will. Okay, I will. <laughs> Talk me into it should stay inside the stencil if I want to do this. For those of you who don't really do a lot of doodling, this is one of the easiest way to get started doing it. You don't have to really draw anything. You just trace it with a stencil and the stencil has done probably 75% of the work for you just by being a stencil that you don't have to come up with a design. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this because who wants to watch me do this? And then I will come okay, back. Okay, as you can see, I got a little carried away. <laughs> I went around and used the stencil, the whole stencil, then, then just this portion, this portion, and whittled it down to just this right here. And then I took the smallest one and did that on the edges so that there would be interest off the edge of the paper. So now I'm going to go back and doodle in these. And the, the thing about this is, is that I'm going to doodle in them. And I think I'm going to do basically the same pattern through the whole thing. But the cool part is, is that when you do this and you scan it, you can use it over and over and over and never have to redraw this again. Um, once you scan it, though, if you you... Your scanner is not the greatest of quality of scanners like mine is not. You might have to go back and fill in on top of where it's scanned it and printed it. You might have to go back in with black pen and kind of fill in some places that look like they weren't colored in all the way they are, but the scanner did not pick them up when it printed it off. So you may have to tweak it a little bit, which I've done several times, not a big deal. I just take a Faber-Castell pen and kind of, you know, color it in. Um... And then the reason I did such a large sheet is if I want to cover a book that's larger than what I normally do, then I have the paper to do it. I can run copies of it off for the outside and the inside. So that is, that is the great thing about doing a stencil is I did not have to sit down and draw all these circles and divide them up and measure and do all that Yahoo stuff. All I had to do was trace the stencil. 
these things are great tools for doodling. So pick up some of these out of Gina's shop. I will leave my code down below because I think you get 10 or 15% off if you use my code when you order stuff out of her Etsy store. All right, so when I come back, you're going to see it all doodled up. Be back in a minute. Well, more like four or five hours. <laughs> Okie okay, doke. So let me turn this up. Oh, sorry, it's a little dark in here. There we go. Um, I have spent the last four hours working on this while I watched an auction online. So that was great that there was something sort of distracting me from how long this took. Um, so uh, let me explain to you what I did. I took this from before, like I said, and I just went around and, you know, used different parts of it. Then I decided that there were too many gaps in this and it needed to be filled in with smaller things. So I took, whoops, that's not gonna work. I took this stencil here and then that's what all these are right here, these little balls. I didn't want a whole lot of white space, but I wanted some, so I put the little balls in there. Also, something else that I did for the sparkly part is I took a, oh, I don't know the name brand of these things. These were gifted to me by Peg Robinson, and they're sort of like the um, Signo pens, but there's a group of the pens in the set. There's a whole bunch in the set. There's a group of pens in the set that all have like uh, glittery looking lids and things, and this must be the glitter counterparts to the regular pens in the set. So I took the black glitter one and I filled in, it looks like black graphite, glittery gla graphite, it looks very cool. You can't see it, let me see. Can you see the glitter? It's got a little shiny glitter to it. It looks much better in the light here. You can see, oh, yep, yeah, there you go. If I turn it just a tad, you can see it a little bit in the big one on the side, on the right hand side. There you go. Um, so I wanted to do something a little different. So I took blocks of place, places and just colored them solidly, solidly with the black glitter pen. I want this to be strictly black and white because that's what my um, my book is going to be based on is a black is black and white. So I'm going to go photocopy this and I'll bring it back and show you what the difference is between the photocopy and the original and where you might need to make some little adjustments. Okay, so here is the original piece that I colored by hand. Here is the, now well my, my scanner will only fit in a eight and a half by 11 and I realized that some of it would be hanging off the edge, it's okay. So this is the piece that I scanned and then printed. If you can see, there is a lot of white mixed in with the solid colors. It does not do a great job scanning and reprinting. And if you want that to be a solid black, you're gonna to have to go back with some kind of a pen and color it in. The rest of it is not too horrible, but the stuff that is actually concentrated and be, had been colored in needs some extra oomph. Now let me show you this, because I thought this was rather odd. I scanned this one and printed it. And I thought, well, let me just print the bottom half of the piece of paper because you know, and only only some of it will fit in there. The part where I just stuck it in the the printer and printed it off with not saving, scanning it, and putting it into a file turned out much better than when I scanned it. If you look at the difference in the, you know, in the black areas, they're actually black in this. This one, they're black and white. Isn't that weird? All right, so now I have documented copies of the top of the paper. Well, actually, I put them on both. Yeah, I put them both in the same end. Nope. It's the whole thing. All right, so I have the top and the bottom of this one on two separate pieces of paper. And now, when I make a book, I can use one for the outside of the book and one for the inside so that my paper is consistent. And that's what I really wanted. Now, if you want to add something else onto here, like if you need texture, like was part of the like what was part of the challenge, then you can take this and fill it in with um, the stencil with texture paste. I was thinking seriously of doing that, but 
I'm not going to do it until after I make the book cover because I ran into a problem the last time I had this bright idea that I forgot that when you fold the cover that your um, stuff does is not always as bendable. And yes, I could put medium in it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put some some of these, I think, on the front, probably in black. And that should finish my cover. So now I've got sparkly. I've used the stencils. I've used two different kinds of stencils. I have sparkly, although you cannot see sparkly because I photocopied it, but believe me, the original has that spark, that sparky stuff, and it looks sparkly. It looks nice. I like the way it looks. It turned out really well. I'm very surprised. It took a long time, and I don't want to ever start all over for this one. But I will say that I'm going to go back and redraw these circles empty and photocopy it empty so that if I want to do this again and I want to use a color or I want to do something else inside the circles, they're empty. So I can play around with this full or empty either way. So that's the benefit to um, photocopying your stuff at different stages, which I forgot to do. The empty stage is great because it gives you a basis for something else. And then the the finished piece is great so that you can use it over and over. And if I want to cut the circles out, I can always cut these out. I can cut out the little balls. I can cut these out. They're all ready to go. I don't have to do anything else to them. So I'm trying to save myself time. Doodling like this in great details, even with a stencil, takes a time commitment. And I don't always have that kind of time on my hands. So photocopy, photocopying is a great way to do this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the rest of the weekend covering my book, my cover, and then I will come back and show you the finished project. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. I took the two papers that I photocopied, one scanned, one photocopied. I don't want to mess with my original here. And I use them to cover the majority of the outside and the inside. I'm going to need... I think one more one more piece because this is a rather large piece of cardboard here. What do I have here? This is eight and three quarters by four and a half. So it's you know just a little bit smaller than what you would use for an eight and a half by eleven or right around eight and a half by eleven. So I wanted it to be good size. So I have to still cover this, but I haven't quite decided what I want to do about the spine. I thought about taking black cardstock and putting it down here and then decorating it, but everything else is black and white. And I don't think I really want to emphasize just black on here. So maybe I will get some black duct tape and do it down there to give it a nice contrast on the side here. I did go back over the dark areas with that glitter, yeah, this is the one, with the glitter pen, the black, and it's a medium point. It's not a fine point, it's a medium point. So it colors beautifully inside the lines. And I went back over some of the stuff to accentuate the sparkle in it, just on the front. I don't, I'm not gonna do it on the back. And then maybe I'll get some black duct tape and put it down the side here and finish covering the inside. Now I did think about filling this in with black cardstock along here and then down the, the spine on the inside. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I'll be back once I make a decision. Okay, I've come to a stand point, a standing still point. Oh, I did not realize that I glued that on. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay, so I'm not going to cover the spine with black paper. I'm not going to cover it with white paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the binding on here first, the three-hole pamphlet stitch. Then I'm going to take, I have happen to have some white duct tape, and I'm going to take the white duct, duct tape and put it on here so that it will open and close nicely and the wear and tear will be minimal on the spine. Um, the inside, I glued, I had to run off another copy of 8.5 by 11 of the print cut it down so that it would fit inside what I had already glued in here. I'm not sure I did a good job here. Um, then I took a strip in here. So, there we go. 
This will be on the inside. I don't like leaving bare cardboard here in the middle. I don't know, it's just my preference. Some people doesn't bother them, but it bothers me, so I try to cover it up. I didn't do a very good job, so I took um, white paint and kind of lined in the crease here. I could have made this a three-piece book and cut these off and then used um, Tyvek, but I decided to go ahead and leave it. It's just, it's cardboard, you know. It's not even chipboard, it's just basic cardboard. So you can see the little little things right there. So it's just basic thin cardboard. And it's okay because it's going to be a black and white glue book. And I don't care that it, it's not made of chipboard. As a matter of fact, it feels kind of cool. It's nice and light. I like the way it turned out. I'm, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. It took a lot of time just to do the stuff on the front. But I, I like the results and I think it looks really good. I will put some kind of... A, and I will do this with black cardstock, and I will give it a name. And um, then I'll put the do the three whole pamphlet stitch here after I get my pages cut. Cover that up with white duct tape. And then this side, this inside will be fine because it's already been covered up with the same paper from the rest okay, of it. Okay, so here is the end. Here is the book in the early stages of being glued into. I took the word journey, the journey stamp from one of the uh, Gina's collections that has the scribble words. It also has the scri scribble words in that collection and embossed it on a piece of deli paper, then glued that onto a piece of black scrapbook paper, then glued that onto a piece of white computer paper and glued it on the book. And I've decided maybe that wasn't the best way to showcase the word on the deli paper. So what I might do is I might go ahead and get another piece of white computer paper, re-emboss the word journey, glue it on the black, and then glue it over this because you can't, I don't think you can see the word good enough. All right, so here's the spine. I took some enamel dots and took E6000 and glued those on. Then this is white duct tape. I took my fingernails because I like the way the, the ridges look on the on here. I took my fingernail and ran it down and you can do this with anything but your fingernails. Ran it down either side of the signatures where they were sewn in to make it more pronounced so that you can see the texture in it. And I just ran my fingernails down it and that was it on either side of the string. And it gave it a more pronounced look. All right, so there's that. And then on the inside, I've been gluing, I took, um, I have a collection of black and white scrapbook paper. And I just randomly tore out pieces of scrapbook paper, sewed in three signatures that have five pieces of paper in each signature and then sewed them into the book. And then I went back with the offcuts from cutting the paper down to size. I've been using that to glue on top of the scrapbook paper in here and magazine text, em envelopes, magazine text, envelopes. I think that's basically all I've been working with. So that's what I've been doing for the last few hours is just gluing in background paper over the white and then the black so that there's a contrast. And this is where I've stopped and I've made it almost through one signature. I still have the rest of these signatures left to glue in. See, there's the front side and the back side. Um, I'm almost done with the one signature and then I'll keep moving on and finish the rest of them off. I wanted to make this book strictly black and white, but after I glued this on, well, it wasn't this one, it was the next one. When I got this glued in, I took out some images and realized that Black and white images on black and white paper, is, um, it needs more color. So I think what I will do is I'll leave the backgrounds black and white and then put color images in here instead of just black and white. We'll see how it goes, but I tried, you know, other images that were based on black and white that had color on them. I mean, the background's black and then there's all kinds of color. I thought maybe that was more interesting than just plain, ordinary, black and white book. Oh, for a book this size. I can make a small book, just black and white, but the book this size, I don't think so. Uh, 
um, let's see, I've collected other black background papers that have bright colors and interesting patterns on them. But they need a little more help than that. I did emboss a bunch of stamps that I find very interesting and I held them up against it but still it needs some color it just you can I don't think you can just do black and white with black and white with black and white sort of thing um, so I, I may have to change how I how I decorate this book I do love this stamp so I did a whole bunch of embossing on deli paper and text while I was waiting for dinner last night and so I have a whole bunch of these now that are black embossed but we'll see how it goes anyway so I'll come back another time after I finish this book and I will do a flip through once it's once everything's glued inside it okay so that's it for the month of May's design team video for Gina B. Aarons see you guys next month bye, -bye.